conversation with a trained professional. Be sure to go back and try these recipes with your family. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our February Heart Health Month cooking demonstration. My name is Julia Demery, and I'm a health and wellness specialist with the Department of Parks and Recreation. Before we begin, we're going to go over a few housekeeping items. So on this screen, you'll see an icon that is the microphone icon. You should see, uh, you will need to click on this icon to mute yourself, excuse me. We would ask that you remain muted to limit any distractions during the program tonight. Next, I want to draw your attention to the camera icon. You will use this to turn your camera off and on. Please be mindful that when your camera is on, all participants joining us this evening will be able to see your screen. You have the option to keep your camera on or turn it off, but remember we want to minimize distractions throughout the program and keep the focus on the presentation being provided. Next, I'm going to show you how to pin a participant. To do this, you will need to click on the show participants icon. In the participant column, select the individual that you want to view on your screen and then click or tap the three dots icon to reveal a menu. From the drop down menu, select pin for me. The pinned participant becomes the focus in your view and only your view, regardless of the speaker. To unpin, repeat these three steps and select unpin. Repeat the same process to pin an additional participant. Please note that if you're using a web browser, the PowerPoint presentation will be in a smaller window at the top or bottom of your screen. Next, I'd like your, to draw your attention to another Teams feature. You can also turn on live closed captions during the meeting. To do this, you will click on the three dots for more options, and then you can scroll down and find the option that says turn on live captions. Then you will start to see captions at the bottom of your screen. You may choose to turn this feature on if needed. The last icon I want to tell you about is the chat icon. This will allow you to ask questions throughout the program. To type a question, you'll just click on the icon like you see on the screen now to bring up the chat box and it will take you to what you see next. Here it is. Once you see the chat box, there will be a space for you to type your question in. Hit enter and we will see your question on the screen. Please feel free to ask as many questions as you'd like throughout the program and we'll also have some time at the end to answer any lingering questions. We're looking forward to a great discussion. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our trained professional for the evening. Rosalind Law is our trained professional, and she has education that has equipped her with extensive knowledge in holistic nutrition, health coaching, clinical herbs, and preventative health. Drawing on these skills and her knowledge of different dietary theories, she works with clients to help them make lifestyle changes that produce real and lasting results. Roz received her training as a health coach from the Institute for Integrative Nutrition's Innovative Health Coach Nutrition sorry, health coach training program. And she also received training as a clinical herbalist from the Mid-Atlantic School of Herbalism and the Smile Herb Shop. As a clinical herbalist, she can provide a complete assessment and recommend a customized list of herbal remedies for her clients. She uses food, herbs, and exercise for healing and maintaining a heavenly body. Welcome, Roz. Let me get back in here. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Awesome, 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 awesome. Welcome, everybody. I am so happy, happy, happy to be here. And we're going to get started. It's February. Today is February 1st. And what does that mean? It's, it's love month, it's heart health month. And so that's what I'm going to be concentrating on today is a heart healthy recipe. Recipe for your heart, how you can, you know, the foods that you can eat that benefits your cardiovascular system, all right? So without further ado, let me see. First, I always say, make sure you're washing, washing your hands, washing your hands really, really nicely all the way up to your elbows before you start cooking your food. And especially before you uh, go, uh, you gotta wash your vegetables and everything before you cook them. So you're washing your hands, up to your elbows, and then wash your fresh vegetables um, from the produce section. What I am preparing for you tonight, I simply love. It's one of my favorite, and um, it's actually a favorite, a childhood favorite. One of, the, one of the things that I used to love to do as, um, I mean, my mom used to cook for me all the time, and that is tuna cakes. Tuna cakes. Now, I know you all are saying, what in the world? Tuna cakes, what? I know you've heard of salmon cakes, but what about tuna cakes? It's the same concept, except for what you're not using salmon, you're using tuna. 
and um, which is a little bit more, you know, uh, should I say it's a little easier on your pocketbook also, because you can get a couple of cans of tuna, but I'm going to talk about that tuna in a minute as far as why it can be so uh, expensive. All right, I'm going to talk about the difference of the tuna. All right, so let's get started. We're talking about tuna cakes, and I have the recipe here, here on my phone. So what I'm going to first do is go ahead and put some olive oil in the pan. Now, you all are going to receive the, um, the, the um, recipe after the uh, demonstration at some point. All right. Now, what I'm using is... Um, the tuna, of course. So I'm using the albacore tuna. Now, I like albacore tuna. The, I call it the white meat of the tuna. And I you also like to use um, sustainable tuna. So then, and it's um, farm raised, you know, in the sea, wild caught and farm raised. So I'm using two, two cans. It's actually on the recipe, it says, uh, 2.5 ounces, but there's no such thing. It's, it's a, a five ounce can, but I'm using two five ounce cans because this is going to be my dinner for my husband and I. Something had popped over here. It's going to be my dinner over here. All right, so I'm using two cans of albacore tuna albacore wild caught tuna. Now, if you want to get the regular tuna, it's fine. If that's what your, um, your desire is, you can do that. But what I want to say about the tuna is this. The difference between the albacore tuna and then the regular tuna. We all know that the albacore tuna is more expensive, for sure. The same size can. Your five ounce can can be over $1. It can be almost $2 for one can, especially if it's wild caught. So the difference is this, the white tuna, the white albacore is the center part of the fish, the center part of the fish. The other cans that cost, well, I don't, you know what? I honestly don't know how much the other cans cost right now, but I know back in the day, they were at least, you can get a can of tuna for 39 cents or 49 cents. So it might be about maybe 89, or 99 cent now. I'm talking about the regular tuna, but if you notice, when you open the can, it's dark meat, it's dark pieces. And those are the, I call the scrapes, the scraps. So around that white meat, around the tail, the fin, the head, you know, around it. And then they put that in there because they're going to sell the whole fish. If they can get 49, 99 cent from you and you don't care, then that's fine. But I just wanted to let you know the whiter, part portion of that fish is the albacore, is the albacore tuna. Now, why tuna? Why do we talk about tuna? Now, let me just say this. You all, I'm going to ask you some questions and you're going to be able to type in the chat. Give me, you know, talk back to me, talk back to me. So why do you think, what do you, okay, this is a question. What do you, what do you get from tuna that makes it heart healthy. Because we're talking about, today is February 1st, we're talking about healthy heart. So what do you think you get from the tuna that makes it heart healthy? Go ahead and type it in the chat for me. Type it in the chat. Type it in the chat, I wanna know. You there, Julia, Ju you're my, um, my reader. Yes, it's me for a little bit tonight. Uh, we have okay. some folks typing, so nothing yet, but they're thinking. All right, wonderful. I'm I'm just separating and breaking up my tuna. Okay, we've got some answers. Uh, Kamika thinks it may have a special fat, and Darlene says omega three. Who said that, Darlene? Yes, she is absolutely right. The the omega that's in it is great for the heart, right? So you get, and then so if some people don't eat fish then that's why you take your omega-3s, omega-6, your omega, your fish oils, your fish oil, and then you'll get the omega, but um, um, that's that's what makes your it heart healthy, heart healthy. So that's why I'm doing the tuna cakes for you tonight. Now you can, you can still get omegas from salmon as well. 
if you don't care for tuna, do the salmon. So I have the tuna in here. The next thing I'm going to put in here is breadcrumbs. I'm going to add my breadcrumbs. All right. The next ingredient will be my, now I'm, I'm using vegan mayonnaise because that's the only thing I use, but you can use your Miracle Whip or your, uh, or your regular mayonnaise. Now, the thing about the regular mayonnaise, if you're having issues with cholesterol, you know, you want to really, really not use a whole lot of, of fat, right? Right, so I use a vegan mayonnaise. A vegan mayonnaise, yes, yes. All right, breadcrumbs. White onion. I'm going to save some of this onion for my next recipe. So I'm using a white onion, chopped up. You can chop it fine, however you like your onions chopped. Um, the next thing is some Parmesan cheese. Now, if you're a vegan, they make vegan Parmesan cheese. This happens to be real, um, real Parmesan cheese. And I say real, I mean from milk. <laughs> It's not vegan is what I'm trying to say. So Parmesan cheese, I'll save some. And then I have lemon juice. Lemon juice, I squeeze this, I squeeze or squoze from the lemon. <laughs> I'm gonna put the lemon juice in, in there. And again, you're going to get the recipe with all the um, numbers, but I see, I think somebody's writing. I think Irene is writing. So you're trying, you're keeping up. I love it. Um, lemon juice. And then I'm going to put a little bit of black pepper. I have a fourth of a teaspoon black pepper. All right. And dry, um, parsley. Now on the recipe, I have dried parsley. And I put dried parsley on there just because you can get uh, the parsley a little bit cheaper for your, you know, the money that you spend. But um, because I had fresh parsley, fresh parsley that I'm adding to this recipe, you can use either one. But what I do know is that, you know, you get uh, the parsley and the bunches, it's a lot of parsley. It's a lot, and what, especially when you chop it up like this. So, um, you know, you can chop it all and put it in a Ziploc bag and freeze it if you want to. But a lot of times, it's a lot of parsley, and you only need a little bit. So I put on the recipe dried parsley, okay? And you can use parsley for a lot of things, all right? So parsley. And then I have my garlic. What happened to my garlic? Here's my garlic. Three garlic cloves, three garlic cloves and chop them up really, really nice and fine. You can use a little garlic press if you like to, but I like to chop mine up because I, it's therapeutic for me. <laughs> That's just what I do. It's therapeutic for me. So I chopped my garlic, three cloves of garlic. And why, why do you think I added garlic to it? What does, oh, this is another question for you. What does garlic do for the heart? Go ahead and type it. Type your answer. Type your answer. Type, type, type. Don't what does garlic do for the heart? No Nobody answer No answer yet? <laughs> Oh, someone said antimicrobial. I probably said that wrong. <laughs> Who said it? You did? Yeah. You said, you no, said I didn't say that. Uh, Eugene, Eugene put that in the chat. She said what now? Antimicrobial. Okay, so uh, microbes. A... So, okay, definitely gar garlic is great for that. So what you're saying is that is it, it kind of fights off germs, microbes. So yeah, that's true. And it's antiviral as well. So that's why people take um, take uh, take garlic when they have a cold. I can kind of see the chat a little bit. What what else? What else are they saying? Um, Julia. Let's see. I took over the chat from Julia. This is Savannah. Okay, Sorry. Savannah. <laughs> um, someone said good for managing HBP. 
high blood pressure. Absolutely. That's what I was looking for. Your cardiovascular system. See, these, I'm not looking for no real, real deep answers. It's, it's, it's simple. Cardi- uh, garlic is great for hypertension, your, uh, your blood pressure, and all dealing with the cardiovascular. And it helps to keep that blood pressure low. And so you can actually take uh, garlic capsules or and and or <laughs> do, you know, take real garlic. You can chop up garlic and um, and just put it in all of your food or eat it raw. It's great. All right. So that's garlic. Let me check my uh, recipe again. All right. So I have my garlic. I have a little bit of hype. I use pink Himalayan sea salt, pink Himalayan sea salt. And I put about a one fourth of a teaspoon of pink Himalayan sea salt. All right. Now I'm going to mix all of this together. I'm going to mix it, mix it. Let me turn my pan on. Mix it all together. Now in my pan, I put in some olive oil. I put in olive oil. You can use grapeseed oil, avocado oil. I use olive oil today. And on the recipe, it says olive oil. Onion. It smells so good. Now, the breadcrumbs. Let me talk about the breadcrumbs for a second. You all can use the breadcrumbs that has the herbs in it. So Italian breadcrumbs, you know, any kind of breadcrumbs that has the herbs in it or just the plain breadcrumbs. Okay. Get all this uh, vegan mayo out in here. I'm letting my pan warm up. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a, um, a little another a little bowl. I'm going to put over here some more breadcrumbs. Oh, first, I'm going to cut, uh, crack my egg. So I have one egg. I'm going to crack my egg, scramble it. <laughs> and then bring one fourth, scramble it. And I'm going to add my breadcrumbs, the, re- the remainder of my breadcrumbs, and th- with the egg, along with a little bit more cheese. And it's going to make it like a little, um, I'm going to put it, dip my, my cakes in there, kind of coat it a little bit with it. So I need to add, I'm going to add a little bit of this vegetable broth here just to thin it out some. Won't hurt it. Just need a liquid to kind of thin this out some. Make it like a wash. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to take my tuna cakes. And you can make them any size you like, any size you wish. Nice little size. I'm going to dip it in the wash. And it does get a little messy. (laughs) It does get a little messy, but it's going to taste so good. Make them, this is going to be a wonderful dinner, y'all. Yes. That parsley makes it look so pretty. And so as you can see, you can make about, you can make at least, well, depending on the size of your tuna cakes. You can make them um, small and you can get at least 15 of them if they're small. If they're, or you can make them large if you want to.
And um, got a little bit of wash over here. I always take my uh, jewelry off when I'm doing this. And children would love to help you. You have grandchildren or children in the house. They eat their food better if they, if they know that they help cook it. Does anybody have any questions while I'm pattying these up? Any questions? Type it in the chat if you have questions. No question is a bad question or a wrong question. No questions, um, Savannah. This is Julia. We're tag teaming today. I mean, I'm Julia. back. <laughs> <laughs> it looks playing, like someone's um, typing, but no other questions in there right now. Okay. I'm telling you, it's smelling good in here. I always say that. I know I always say that. <laughs> uh, we do have a question. What temperature are you heating your pot at right now? Medium. Medium. It's, it's on medium. This actually is on medium um, high. But I, I'm cooking on an um, electric kind of range. But you put it on medium uh, normally. That's what you're going to cook it on, in medium. Okay, I'm down to the wire. I'm down to the last bit. I'm making a mess. And you're just going to brown them on, brown them on both sides. Get a little brown, just like you would do salmon cakes. Oh, I need to let that cook some more. Just like you would do salmon cakes. Just brown them on both sides. Put one more in there. So this made how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight cakes. That made eight, eight cakes. And so I'm just going to let that cook a little bit. Brown on both sides. Made a mess, mess, mess. I have to get my mess up later, y'all. Oh, you know what I did not do? I didn't put in there. So I can actually do it now. I did not put in here the lemon zest. And I don't know why, because I love doing that. The lemon zest. You all know how to do lemon zest? You get a grater. I don't know how I forgot it. But you can do it right now because it's going to just take a lemon. And lemon zest is the peel of your lemon in, a, in a, uh, a grater. And you just grate some lemon zest on top. <laughs> it was supposed to be in there with the, with everything else, but you can do it here just in case you forget. It gives a nice little lemon flavor. Ah, yeah. It smells good. Oh, I can smell that um, lemon oil coming out of this lemon. Of the peel. Lemon zest. Roz, do you wash your lemons before zesting them? Yes, I do. I wash them. I wash all of my, my vegetables before I cook them, before I do anything. Yeah, I do. Why, um, did you ask for a particular reason? Uh, this is a, I'm asking. I feel like I always forget, and sometimes there's kind of like a waxy I don't know what what they leave on the lemon, but I I am, have wondered if I should be more diligent about washing my well, lemons and well, limes. So this is the thing, I always well more 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 often than none, I buy organic 
And so you're not going to have that wax on the organic lemons mm. or, or organic fruit, period. So you don't have to worry about that, really, if, you, if you're buying organic. But if you're not buying organic, I would definitely wash them really well. Get a, um, do a nice, um, I'm getting carried away with this. I love doing this. I'm like, ah, I almost forgot y'all were there. I'm like, ah, let me see. <laughs> and I'm getting all around the whole lemon just because I love doing it. But um, plus not only that, it's making the room smell so good, like real lemon fresh. <laughs> let me stop. Let me stop. I got to keep going. Yeah, but um, if you do the um, the organic, then you shouldn't have to worry about about if you want to wash it. I mean, you know, some people are going to wash anyway. I need to turn this up some. All right, so I'm going to leave this and I'm going to go to the next recipe and let this cook a little bit. browning nicely. All right. Whoop. Gotta get my flipping skills together. Flip, flip. Flip it. Okay. All right, I'll probably flip them one more time. Oh, smells so good. I'm hungry too. All right, here we go. Next recipe. No more, no questions. So let's go to the next recipe. The next recipe is quinoa. Quinoa, you guys. So quinoa comes from the uh, South, South America. There's fields and fields and fields of quinoa. If you Google it, you can see the different color. There's black, there's red, and there's white quinoa. Um, and so you can actually buy them individually, or you can get what's called um, tricolor quinoa, which means all three colors are in, are in there. They're mixed together. And it's beautiful. It's nice. Um, I actually, so when I went shopping, they only had the white one. They were all out of the tricolor. But I normally get the tricolor quinoa. So the recipe. Now, your, the recipe that you all are going to get says um, you boil your, I'm going to tell you how, how you do your, your quinoa. It's going to come out awesome every time. So you're going to boil your two cups of vegetable broth. Now, you can use chicken broth if you like. But you all know I'm a vegetarian, so I'm using vegetable broth. So you boil your two cups of vegetable broth. It's two cups of liquid to one cup of quinoa. And, it's, and that's true for all grains. So oatmeal, grits, you know, rice, all grains. That's what you do. Two cups of liquid to one cup of the grain. Now, um, you boil that. Now, when I boil it, I bring the water to a little slight bubble boil. Then I add garlic and a little bit of sea salt and some herbs, whatever you have, some Italian herbs, uh, whatever herbs you have. I put it in the water so that it, as your grain is cooking, as the quinoa is cooking in this case, it's, it's soaking up all of those, all of the garlic and the Italian herbs and the sea salt, whatever you put in that water is, is so it's going to be flavorful, right? Same thing with the vegetable broth, whatever you um, cook it in, it's going to be flavorful. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is my quinoa is already done. Now you can either cook it first like this and, and like I'm going to do now, and then add your vegetables to your pan and then mix it together, which is how I'm going to do it now. So I'm going to put a little bit more vegetable broth in my pan because now I need to say this. Whatever vegetables you have, whatever vegetables you have, you can add to this recipe. I just did a minimum. Um, 
asparagus. You can put zucchini in here. You can put kale. You can even put, um, not a vegetable, but you can put beans in there. Make it plentiful, very nice. But what I'm going to put in here today is some mushroom. I have some mushrooms already cut up, so I'm going to add my mushrooms, okay? Next, I have some red bell pepper. I love red bell pepper. So I'm going to put red. Now, you can use green, orange, yellow, whatever color you want. But I love red, red bell pepper. And then I'm going to add some cranberries. These are dry cranberries. Because I'm going to, every bite, I want a little bit. This is just how I'm making this one. You can omit the cranberries if you like. It's not mandatory. And then I'm going to have some of these onions. Remember, I saved some onions. So I'm going to have some onions. Onions, great, great for you. Add the onion. Yes, yes, yes. And then I'm going to let it cook down a little bit. What I'm going to, the seasonings, the herbs I'm going to add to this is a little bit of basil. So I have basil, uh, one tablespoon of basil and one tablespoon of, of uh, oregano. Let's put all that in there. Oregano and basil. Oh, my God. I love the smell of basil. I love the smell of all herbs, y'all. Oregano, basil, and then I have some garlic, garlic powder, not garlic salt. We do not want to use garlic salt, okay? Garlic salt. Gonna mix. And you know what else I'm going to put in here? I have this parsley left over. I'm going to go ahead and put some parsley over in here too. Like I said, you can use um, you can use some kale or spinach. Oh, damn, Jesus smells so good. All right, so now that has cooked down some. I'm going to add my already cooked quinoa. Already cooked quinoa. Now, this is actually um, a little bit more than a cup that, that I made. And, oh, you know what? Let me, let me go ahead and mix this together. And I have really, really a nice tip I'm going to tell you all. I'm going to check on my cakes over there. Anybody have any questions? Any questions at all? Nothing in the chat right now. Quinoa. Oh, so good. Can you see this very well? Yes, it looks beautiful. Oh, yeah. And it smells as good as it looks. <laughs> I'm telling you. And it tastes really, really nice. All right, let me come over here and um, check on my tuna cakes here. I don't want them to burn. I really, really want them to be really nice and brown. But I'm, oh yeah, okay, that one's good. But you all know the tuna is from the can. It's already cooked, right? I did put that egg in there, so that's what, but it's been under the heat long enough for it to be cooked um, good. We do have a question. Um, if you haven't already mentioned them, could you talk a little bit about the health benefits of quinoa? Oh, yeah. Let me talk about that. Absolutely. That's what I was going to talk, tell you about. I was going to, I want to talk a little bit about this quinoa. Um, so the health benefits. It's um, iron. A lot of iron is in quinoa. Quinoa is, uh, let me turn this down. So a lot of iron, a lot of fiber, and um, it is great for, I said iron. It's iron and, fi and fiber. What else is it? Is it? I'm getting a blank, drawing a blank. But um, 
it gives you energy. So it sustains you throughout the day when you eat the quinoa. It's like a, a grain that swells in your stomach and gives you energy. So it's a lot of great health benefits. Oh, and it's great for the heart. That's what we're talking about. It's great for heart health. Quinoa is, that's why I did the recipe. Great for the heart health. So it has a lot of vitamins in it, um, but it's sustainable throughout the day. I love it. Um, it was something else I was going to say about the quinoa, too. I said a tip. Oh, this is a great tip. This is what I was going to say. When you make your quinoa, you know how I made it here, a bulk, like make a lot. Instead of using vegetable broth, if you're just going to make the quinoa by itself, use water instead of the vegetable broth. Use water. Why? Why are you going to use water? Because you can have a container of quinoa in your refrigerator, already made the plain one. And then you can actually use quinoa for breakfast. So you can make, just take a little bit out and put it in, a, in, 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 you know, in the pot. And then you can add your, your almond milk. You can add nuts and cranberries or raisins, bananas, blueberries, strawberries, put some cinnamon in there. And it's a quinoa breakfast. It's a, it's a breakfast cereal with quinoa instead of oats. But, um, and then later on in the day or in the week, that same batch, you can make this for your lunch or for your dinner. Great tip, yes. And then, like I said, you can put cranberry, I mean, um, asparagus, beans. I sometimes put beans in here with the kale. And it makes an excellent, excellent side dish. You can add fish to this uh, or chicken. Not add to it, but I mean have it on the side. And then have your tuna cake. I would have all your vegetables would be in, in, in here already. And I'm going to come around. And get you all get a closer look. Closer look. Can you all see that? Beautiful. We can see it steaming from here. Yes, it's steaming. I hope it's not steaming up the camera. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, and it's nice. And this quinoa is nice and fluffy and flaky. Now, you know when your quinoa is ready, when it opens up, you know it starts off as it looks looking like a seed, hard seed, but then it opens up and it has a ring, a white ring around it, and, um, and it's done. Fluffy, comes out fluffy like this. Mm -hmm. And then my tuna cake, the cheese. Now, you know, you don't have to put the cheese in it, y'all. I'm just saying, but it makes a little better. Amazing. Amazing. All right. Gorgeous. Looks Tuna great. Tuna cakes and quinoa. Mm. So good. And I am hungry. But I'm going <laughs> to be eating. <laughs> now, does anybody have any questions? I want to know. Okay. I have a question for you. What are what is one take type in the chat one takeaway something that you learned today that you didn't know that you know or a recipe that you may include at some point how about this month in heart health in heart health month a recipe that you definitely said that you're going to include that while they're doing that, um, Wendell is wondering if quinoa is better than rice. It looks similar to rice. Is it better for you? Um, it's, it's different. Yeah, I would say yes, but it depends on what you, if you are uh, deficient in iron, 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 then yes, you should eat a lot of quinoa. It doesn't have, um, it has more iron in it than it does rice, than rice does. <laughs> Yeah, great question. That was a great question. So type in the chat 
a takeaway from tonight, either the tuna cakes or the quinoa or both? Anything? Nothing yet. I'm definitely going to try out the tuna cake recipe, though. I uh, am a big fan of of crab cakes and fish cakes and tuna oh. cakes. So, yeah, I'm going to try it for sure. And Wendell yeah. says he's going to try out the quinoa recipe, definitely. Wendell. Oh, that's a guy. Yeah. <laughs> And so I had turned my pan off and I didn't realize that now it's really getting brown. <laughs> All right, Wendell, that's awesome. Try the Queen Quinoa recipe. It's going to be good. Tracy I is got also going to try the tuna cakes as well. So yeah. Lots of love for the tuna cakes. Yes, yes, yes. I can't wait. I am so happy. All right, well, we don't have any more. Uh... Oh, Eugene does have a question. Um, sure. Can we substitute other fish into the cakes? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You can do salmon, salmon cakes. The whole point of this was heart health. And so any fish is good for your heart. Um, but um, I think salmon and tuna and, and I heard you mention crab cakes so they come from the sea also I have to check that out and see if, if crab cakes if crabs have as many omegas in it as um, tuna and salmon that's a good question yep but you can definitely add uh, sal do salmon cakes It is a good question, though. Being in Maryland, we do have a lot of crab some years when it's not too expensive. <laughs> right. When it's done. And right now it is. Oh, uh, yep. Any anything else? Anybody else? That's all we have right now. OK, I love it. I love it. Well, I I have enjoyed you all. And um, I think Julia is going to talk about what's coming up for the rest of this exciting month that I just love. And I appreciate you all for stopping in. Tell a friend, tell a family member to join us. Yes. Thank you so much, Roz. That was wonderful. Welcome. You are welcome. Thank you. I always learn something new during your cooking demos. Um, so we would love your feedback. We are going to send out a survey within um, after this presentation this evening. And if you complete it within the next 24 hours, um, you will be entered into winning a health and wellness gift bag. Woohoo! Um, if you're interested in the program recording, please email us at wellness at pgparks.com. We can get that to you. These will also get posted onto our virtual library on our website um, within the next couple weeks. And please join us uh, the Wednesday after next on February 15th from 6 to 7 for our next cooking demo for Heart Health Month. Heart Healthy Pairings, Perfect Pairings uh, cooking demo and that will also be with Chef Roz. And please join us for Dine, Learn, and Move, which is an awesome partnership program uh, that involves exercise, nutrition education, and a cooking demonstration on February 22nd from 6 to 7.30. And please visit wellness.pgparks.com for a complete list of our Heart Health Month offerings. We're doing some fun events over the weekends in the next coming weeks. Thank you all so much for joining us. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you for joining us for National Heart Health Month. For more videos to help you live a heart-healthy lifestyle, visit the Department of Parks and Recreation's online resource center at pgparks.com or the Health and Wellness Virtual Library at wellness.pgparks.com.